voices. I hear voices loud enough here. What's up, Pedro? Yeah, so, um, this boss fight is really, really coming along. It's actually quite fun already. I love it, I love it when he starts to puke out and smooth the sand. I was just saying that, um, he, he eats so much sand in his daily diet that he pukes it all out, too, so. Um, it's like a cat with air balls, you know? So, there's a, there's a moment in the hill where he will, like, hang down from the ceiling and then, um, puke out sand. Let's see what happens. He does it randomly. And then as, as soon as he starts having hack uh, under a third health, there he goes, he does it there. When he's get, getting low on health, he does it more often, basically. You had an interview? And tomorrow you got another one? Good for you, man. Keep the interviews flowing, get your job. How are you feeling about the interviews? Are they going well? look a little different than the Zerbs because when the Zerbs come up you can see them and stuff but if they're kind of like there's not enough contrast between the dead Zerbs and the regular Zerbs so that I shall do. Okay so I'm um, working on a bug here. Um, there's a bug with the old Xbox 360 controllers. I think it's because I introduced some new features to the um, to the, the controller input for Xbox One controllers, and I think I must have messed something up for the Xbox 360 controllers. So my goal right here is to fix that bug without breaking the Xbox One controllers. So the first sign of that is whenever you have an Xbox 360 controller plugged in and, and you go to the main menu, it always asks you to bind. So that should be a good clue as to what's going wrong. Um, it might have something to do with the default bindings. In fact, I bet you anything it has to be, it's probably one of these default bindings that just can't, doesn't quite have bound right or something. So, I guess it will be, I'll start in uh, interfaces, this is a piece of code I have not been in in a while, so it's always, always takes a second to remember where, where stuff is. Where is that stuff? Controller interface, that's it. Okay, so when I create a new controller interface, This is manual. Hmm. Oh, maybe it's just doing controller one. Ah, here it is. So if we're not mobile, don't have custom bindings or needs bindings. Okay, has custom bindings. It does. Okay, so it wouldn't it wouldn't do that one. So it's just needs bindings. Controllers needs bindings. 
for each of the sticks. How many sticks do we got? Sticks, 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 num sticks. The one stick. That's, that's right. Got my Xbox 360 controller plugged in. Got one stick. So if for each one of the sticks, if we have findings for generic code, get device hash of joysticks I. I think it should be not has bindings. Wow, I think I must have really messed that up there. So get device hash. Let's see what it returns. 57301. Let's see that value is hex. DFD5. If I go to my saves and I go to <coughs> controller DFD5. Yeah, it's already bound this. Uh, it should be automatic. Got all these bindings. Okay. And then get generic code for that. Should shift up the bits. View that value is hex. Cool. That looks good. And then if input has bindings. Has all bids paired up first? Wait, code and equals divide device mask. Right. Whoa, this is so broken. This is totally not right. Has all bits paired out first, K device mask? That cannot be right. We're looping over paired out bindings, paired out first. What the heck is paired up? Where are the bindings? Bindings type is UN32 type code equals Bindings What are we trying to do here? Pair every pair in bindings. Pair first is this, the second is the binding.
trying to figure out what this is meant to be. Pair first is first is the code. None of these are going to be zero. Oh, these bindings are for the keyboard. That's why I was so confused. I'm like, why does it not have the bits for the... There we go. No, this is not even the thing. But anyways, okay, so we're, what we really want to check for here is just the first thing. We and it with K device mask. Yeah, so the, this should return false. Has bindings. Yeah, that's not working. Broken. Broken. Okay, before I go and change and fix this, I should really check what else is using that function. Wow, such a broken function, so much defend depends on that. Okay, I'm gonna make it as clear. Uh, there's two instances of this has bindings or this this keyword in my code, so it'd really be nice to just change this to something else so they're more unique. Collab does have bindings. There we go. Now it's now it's clear where that this function's being used. It's used when we call set auto bindings. It's used when we set up the controller, and it's also used if we call when we call needs bindings, which is that ultra important function there. Okay, so inside input has bindings. This is obviously totally wrong. This line of code got messed up big time. I think when I changed my my uh, usage of has all bits, so it should be has all bits pair dot first and device mask, and it should have all the bits of code. Let's see if that returns true now. Hello, Demi user. What's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Good. Okay, now it's returning true. 
when we call setup controllers, we already have bindings for that. So it's going to look through and set the does have bindings. Here it's calling it set auto bindings. If we don't have bindings already, we, yeah, it automatically binds and saves bindings and all that. Okay, good. And now if I do this, um, we already have custom bindings and it doesn't need bindings. Let's make sure this works. Same device hash should be Yeah, DFD5, cool. And then, yeah, it should return true. All right, we looks like I fixed it. Man, I can't believe that was so messed up. That, re that really messed up a lot. I just didn't know it. Oh my God, so now it's fixed. So I'll turn off that breakpoint. What's up, Panko? Looks like it worked. So it's no longer asking me to rebind the controls every single time. Yay! It works again. All right, this is great news because the Xbox 360 controller was all messed up and Hell, probably everything else was messed up too. I can't even see how. Yeah, I use Coco's 2D, yep. So if I go into a game, let's see what happens if I go into a game. I use Coco's 2D X actually, not Coco's 2D. It's not asking me to rebind. <clears throat> all right. Um, okay. If, here's something wild. If I go and delete all my other controllers, from my settings, it should automatically bind. No problem. Yeah, cool. Awesome. No problem automatically binding that 360 controller. Oh, that was weird. Oh, you can press the right arrow to go in on those. Yeah, the worm's coming along, right? The worm's looking pretty good, huh? That's what was going on with my friend when he played. My friend kind of has like um jittery fingers and so i think that's what would happen with him trying to bind and it it would um um he ac accidentally erased and all that what's up old bone frederick and so he told me Okay, the next thing I should verify is if I play the game with two controllers, if it binds the second controller to jib automatically, no problems. And it looks like I do already have some bindings for that. Okay, so I gotta get my Xbox 360 controller plugged in. Whatever, Xbox One controller. I 
don't got enough USB ports anymore. Man, this is a pretty important bug fix here. What was going on with the control? I remember I played with my friend and there was we had tons of troubles, but mostly it was with with the bindings on the main menu like that. It's, pro it's probably all related. I bet you this fixed basically everything. This one little line of code. Yeah, I got that on my list, Pedro. I got a Steam controller too. Check it. Steam controller, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I will get to that. One thing at a time, one thing at a time. Okay, I guess the first thing I should do is delete now, nah, let's just see if it works from the beginning. So what I want is for the Xbox 360 controller to play human and the Xbox One controller. Uh, you did? You were just sending me that about the Steam controller? Yeah, I gotta get that working. In fact, hopefully I'll be able to get that working by this release. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get the D-pad working, because the D-pad has its um, it's all a custom API. So I'm, I have no idea how difficult that is to get the custom API working. Okay, we're good so far. Right, turn, whoops. If I go and set um, Jim's controller, or Jim to be human controlled switching controllers oh I got the Xbox okay cool yeah nice he's so much better at being a little faster check if I delete my bindings for player two it should automatically bind Yes, it automatically binds. Okay, it looks like that was a one line of code fix. It's really not that bad. Wow. I'm actually uh, pretty excited about that. Okay. Awesome. Look at that. One line of code fix. Uh, Fox Hunter, that's uh, that's right. It's supposed to be like that, but it's not for the Steam controller's um, D-pad. The D-pad thing requires special API or whatever. So I gotta I gotta spend some time working on a, on their custom API. Uh, Old Bone, the Worms animations are mostly complete. Yeah. Mostly, I, I might come back and like update them and make them a little better. Is there you got some feedback or anything? You got something you? Should 
There's really not much, that much to animate on him. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. I know, but I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? You know, it's a it's a, it's a new thing. It's a touchpad, so like, I, might, I guess... It would be nice if they just made it, if they made it better where it could, um... Where it could, like, map, like, a regular axis, like a vector axis, or a regular D-pad or whatever, too. Um, but it doesn't work that way. So there's where he pukes out his, his sand. There's a lot of little touches to this boss fight that really make it, make it fun. Like, you can see when he, when he comes flying downward, there's a shadow on the ground, so you can see where he is. Because um, otherwise it gets really confusing in a 2D game. You're like, uh, where, where is that guy actually on the XY plane? So when he's up high in the Z plane, you can, you can see where he's coming because he's got a shadow. Um, lots of other little touches too, like the Zerb, when they come out of the ground, they start burrowed. So that, that, all, that helps the little boss fight here look a lot more fun. Um, the Zerbs also can give you items, so when you're fighting, well, let's get Jim in this fight. Yeah, um, and of course all the sand is poisoned because the sandworm is made of acid stuff. It's got acid in its blood. So it eats the sand and then poops it back out. Spits it out. Belches it out. Okay, so um, I want to make sure that that was the only thing on my list as far as controllers go. That was a good bug fix. Um, where is those? Here we go. Always ask to rebind. That's fixed. Yeah, that's another. That's another bug. There was something where the Xbox 360 controller, after using it for a while, it just started constantly going upwards. I don't think it had anything to do with my friend's kind of like jittery fingers. He had jittery fingers. But I don't think it was that. Like something was causing. I hope this little bug fix actually fixed that too. But I guess I could just leave this one on my list for a minute. Okay. That's good. One bug fix. Free parking on Boris and Bell. Uh, Boris and Bell has like some of the most points of anybody. Okay. So that is, um, Fix bug which caused the uh, main menu to ask to rebind control controller every time. Use Vim, all right, Vim. Yeah, I love Vim. I'm getting to love Vim. At first I was really confused about Vim. Gotta admit, trying to exit Vim, I'm like, exit? Uh, but finally, some people convinced me to start using Vim, and I'm actually kind of a fan now. I'd actually like to start using the Vim plugin for Xcode at some point. Um, and I always, what really helped me get to use get used to Vim was I actually changed my bindings in the game to Vim bindings. So I'm actually, when you see me running around and stuff, I use the keyboard mostly for um, 
for development, you know, and I have my bindings actually set to J, K, H, and L for movement and F, G, B, and S for buttons and stuff. So, yeah, Vim keys really helped me get, I mean, that really helped to get my Vim keys going because, like, it's mostly mu muscle memory, you know, once you learn, once you learn Vim kind of muscle memory, then you're good to go, but it, it really took that for me to get the muscle memory. Awesome. All right, that's one bug fixed. Also confirmed that you can plug in a controller and it binds nicely to player one. Awesome. Okay, I guess uh, next I'll, I'll start on what I was going to work on the rest of today's stream, which was to work on um, the entrance to uh, the entrance to this dungeon. So I'm going to get rid of my controllers because I need to get my graphics tablet plugged in. How do you say dinings every time I set them? Oh, how do you save your, oh, you mean in Vim? You just open up your uh, VimRC. So I've got, I got mapped. I was talking about bindings in 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 the game Songbringer there, but this is uh this is how you remap stuff or save your bindings. You just like set up your your VimRC. Is that what you meant? I might be confused. I might have that. I might have that wrong. Sorry, man. Uh, that's what you meant? Okay, cool. Yeah, check out the VimRC, man. If you're a fan of Vim, you gotta get the you gotta get your VimRC all set up how you want it. Can you, do, you can do color schemes. You can remap just about everything. Set your preferences. Like I, I like ignore case. That's a pretty important one. Ignore case lets you um when you're when you're doing searches, it's the default is to ignore case rather than, you know, it's just way easier to search through your file with ignoring the case, in my opinion. Yeah, the learning curve is kind of all, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it does mess with your head, the modal thing. But now that I'm used to it, it, it makes a lot of sense to go with the modal. Yeah, Demi, right? It does grow with you and your knowledge. Eventually, yeah, if, like, this is about all I know at this point. <laughs> it's, you know, at some point I'll have a longer VMRC, and I'll, like, I'll have different maps and stuff like that. I don't know why the diff the default for for like your I don't know I really prefer this right here remapping semicolon to colon then you don't have to you don't have to press the shift key every time which is really kind of annoying in my opinion but um this too I haven't really used this whole JK thing but JK is kind of nice to exit yeah and then you got a key combo for it. Yeah, ignore case. Yeah, ignore case is really, really good. Oh, I know. The Unity build thing is such a bad part of, like, Xcode's uh, autocomplete. So you did you confirm that that was the problem for you? Because, like, I remember that was the problem for me when I had, when I had it set up for Unity builds. Basically, if Unity builds are things where, like, if you guys don't know what we're talking about... Unity build is where you would go and you would like include another CPP file inside a CPP file so that you can basically just build everything as one compilation unit. It saves you a lot of time in building. But the problem in Xcode 
is that Xcode's autocomplete stops working if you're in one of these files that is one of those Unity build things. Yeah. It might be headers. Have you tried including all the headers you need inside the Unity build CPP file or whatever? I don't know. That was one of my thoughts I never really confirmed. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start with some artwork now for the exterior of this dungeon. Or maybe the interior. Okay, so let's go to where the interior is. Oh, I messed that up. Okay, we'll save there. That's a I broke that. I was basically adding the ability for um for entrances, stairs, I mean, to um so you could enter a dungeon with stairs rather than just a, an elevator. So I broke something there, and I just remembered I should really add this to my list too. Um Pressing right shouldn't activate a This is important. Oh, and you already do that? Uh okay. Thanks, Scissor. Cheers, man. Yeah, it isn't being fed to the compiler. I know, right? There's sometimes that one to two second delay. I don't get that. Thanks, Fox Hunter. Oh. So it's that all non-header files are being fed to the compiler. Oh, rather than being included. Yeah. I know. That's the that's the problem with how their parser works for that. Yeah. It's it's an assumption that's being made, which is doing is just bad. It's bad. Obviously it's bad, especially if you're doing Unity builds. Well, actually only I think really the only instance where that would happen is for Unity builds. Obviously nobody at Apple ever did a Unity build or tested it with the Unity build or doesn't care. Do you even care, Apple? Okay, so the bug with this is where it's creating the stairs tile. Can't even blame them. Yeah. Yeah, we were both using it tool in a way that it wasn't meant to be used. So that stairs thing right there is supposed to be not a door light, it's supposed to be a... It's not supposed to be that way. Okay. Um, so that's create stairs tile. Is level door light. And has bits. Okay, flag entrance. Yeah. Yep, Apple does have that intended usage case for Xcode. There we go, okay, so the door's fixed now there. Wait, oh, that didn't work.
This is a really messy function. This is so horrible. I really should split this up into like several several different entities. Like there's a upstairs, there's a downstairs, there's the stairs light, there's the oh, see there it broke that one. God damn it. Oh no, has bits. Yeah, man, this is just such a dirty function. Right. I'm not fixing it right now. Okay, there. Now you walk down the stairs, right? And you walked upstairs, right? Very cool. Okay, fixed it. So I'm going back to the entrance of this level. So I can work on the entrance right here. So this is, you can see, you can walk into this area. So this is what I want to work on, the entrance to this dungeon. Right now, I want this to look like a pyramid. I'm not exactly sure how to do that. I'll probably do some big old pyramid blocks and stuff like that. And then I want this entrance here inside to look a little more, I don't know, entrancey? <laughs> uh, one thing I could do to make it more entrancey is in the pattern flags. For entrance five, which is the acid dungeon here, the sandy acid dungeon. I wanna do min wall thickness. Is the stream low frame rate? Yeah, the stream is low frame rate. The stream is 15 FPS. That's the best I can get it to um, to function right um, with, basically I have a really shitty internet connection and this is the best I can get as far as quality goes. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a compromise of quality or like, you know, like, the resolution and frame rate. So this is the best I can get on my shitty upload rate. This is all turning out kind of weird here. Why is that block like high? These blocks are. Oh yeah, no, the game's not laggy. I do have to run the game at 30 frames a second when I'm streaming, but you can run it at 60, you can go 90, 120, you can even turn it all the way off and go maximum frame rate. And on Windows, if you're playing it on Windows, you also have the option for disabling your V-Sync, which is what allows you to actually get above 60 frames a second. So it's all good. It's a pretty simple game, right? It's, it's a 2D game and it's like, it uses pretty um, somewhat optimal like shaders and stuff like that so it's not too intensive on your CPU and stuff. Let's see this side? Oh what's this going on? Oh I think it's a statue. What if we did min max or abs min? What Vim color scheme? I had to do a custom Vim's color scheme. Let me show you. That looks a little better. Maybe. So um, you can set up Vim color schemes. I think you got to go into your .vim folder. Yeah, you do. Yeah, so in your .vim... Do I have the tree command? No. Um, so in your .vim folder, uh, I think, I'm not sure if this is like manual or whatever, but whatever, you just go to your .vim slash colors folder. And uh, I have monokai.vim, which I downloaded from the internet somewhere. Oh, here it is. Let me give you this link.
Yeah, so once you've got that Vim co like a Vim color scheme file inside, there are some default color schemes, or you know, but um, I'm using Monokai or whatever, which is a custom color scheme. So this is how you do your custom color schemes. You just put them in your Vim dot Vim slash colors file, and then you just point to it in your Vim RC. So I do that by using color scheme Monokai, and that actually is custom, you know. Yeah, no worries, man. Okay, I liked it with abs min wall thickness, but I kind of think it fits the style of this dungeon a little better with the regular min wall thickness. Oh, it's... Oh, let's think it's doing an edge path. If I turn on no edge path, that should help. Yeah, that helps for sure. Except for this. This is really weird. Same here. Okay, no problem, I can turn that off. Yeah, so much to get colors. Just <laughs> user share Vim Vim seventy four. That's crazy. You can't do your own custom dot vim folder though? Like a, your own root root vim? Like this? Dot vim, vim. I think this would probably work for you to create one of these. I think I might have even had to manually create this folder, I don't know. Who's the dude that follows you? His name's Jib. Is that what you're asking? The little guy that follows you? His name's Jib. He's a robot. He's actually half robot, half human. He doesn't know that though. Um, he scans the enemy's bodies when we when you go and you kill an enemy. So he goes around and he scans their bodies and stuff. And he can help you, he can pick up diamonds, he can pick up keys. There's lots of conversation you have with him, he's a character, you know, there's a, there's all that. Um, and also you can play as him um, if you have a second player, if you have another controller plugged in, or you bind some keys on a keyboard or whatever, you can set him to be human. So right here I'm, I'm, I'm this character, and now if I use these other keys, I can, you can actually play as Jib. So you can scan things and um, you can distract enemies. He's invincible. Yeah, the monsters will attack attack Jib as well as you. Yeah. So he's a fully functional second player. He's also got this shield thing. It's an item you get where he has his shield, and his shield can. Um, is that his shield? Yeah, his shield will like um, repel enemies. I hope so, Skizzer. Thanks for saying that. Thanks for saying that. That's really encouraging. Uh, I'm trying to find some more enemies so you can see. Oh, so I'm going to turn him back into regular mode, right, where he's in AI mode. Because you'll see he can, um, he can use his shield a lot to help out in battle.
Yes, yeah, I've got many pre-orders, lots of them. Um, there's a Kickstarter for the game back in 2015, and that's how the game kind of got initially funded. So that earned like 800 followers or 800 pre-orders or so. And then, yeah, I think I've earned about that many since then, too, on top of that. So, so it's, well, what, it's been like more than a year. It's been almost a year and a few months since the Kickstarter. So, yeah, this is almost a two-year-long project already. Okay, so going back to this area here at the beginning of this dungeon, I want the... I want the light to be brighter, and I also want it to not overwrite. Um, uh, I want it to not overwrite. Oh, those statues. Okay, so that was in area patterns. Pattern, entrance. Here it is. Nice, man. Thanks. Cheers. It's, um, you can follow it on Steam right now. There it is. No, that's not it. Here it is. Steam page. So yeah, you can follow it here to get like to get notified or whatever when it comes out. I'll post you the link here. Uh, okay, so when it's placing all these statues. If this get tile or so there, I don't want it to overwrite the walls with this with these statues better right on that looks a lot better Okay, well, um, the next thing I want to do is make this light a little brighter. I don't even know if I can make this light any brighter. I want it to look more like a... I guess the, the ground could be darker below it and then you would be able to see that there is some kind of path. Or I could work on this entrance up here. I guess I'll draw some, I'm gonna do some pixel art. How long do I got? This is kind of gonna be, gonna be a short stream. I only got 15 more minutes today. Cause my girl and I are going to see Star Trek. Oh, you want that in your, in your sublime text? Yeah. Can you, can't you do that? Sublime text has so many plugins and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to start drawing a pyramid screen. I'm going to grab the sand colors. Actually, I got um already got the acid boss. Where the hell is it? Oh, there it is. Acid Boss already has a palette. 
I'm just going to steal that palette. Time to get distracted from my main project by writing my own code editor. <laughs> I'm kidding. I think. Oh my god. I know you're. I know. Oh my god. I know how you feel, though, Salad Dongs. There's times I actually wish I could, or wish I had the time to write all my own operating system. I'm like, dude. This, but especially an IDE, my own a code editor, it's just that would rock. Complete rock. Okay, so I'm imagining some giant pyramid stones. Put this in backgrounds. Probably suck it up and deal with it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It is, right? I'm the same way. Xcode is like, there's a few things that I'm so gripey about Xcode, but like for the most part, it's a pretty good editor. Oh, he, he made one in JavaScript? Wow. Wow. All right, I'm not sure how big these blocks should be, so the first thing I'm going to do is draw these, draw some blocks. Oh, wait, I'll get the character. Okay, now I can get a sense of scale. All right, so if it's 36 pixels tall with the ratio and everything for this game, the height of this, the top face should be about 22. What's up, Glam Hoth? I just did the wrong colors. So that should be this color on top. And maybe that color on the side. Hmm, I kind of like them both ways.
Sherrod Rock. Um, he was, he was, um, because there was a there was an initial before you crash your bike, you have a shirt on. So I don't know, maybe maybe at the very end of the game, or maybe something at the very beginning of the game, or maybe some kind of dream sequence or something. He'll have his shirt. I'm not sure. But yeah, I've already got the, the graphics done, so you can actually run around and everything with your shirt on. But you can, but everything else, like if you try and use your sword or your top hat or like anything else like that, requires custom animations. So you can't really do any of that kind of stuff. So it would kind of be need to be a part of the game where you can't do much except for run around. Let me show you how many freaking frames. How many? Actually, how many frames are there just for rock? This is ridiculous. Right? There's there's like so many frames because every one of his animations has to be redone for like for several different situations. Like he either has his hat on or he has his hat off or I should have implemented a cool armor system, but I never did that. Holy crap. See what I'm saying? Oh, uh, there, finally. Okay, starting here. All the way to there. I'm curious about this. 1500? It's freaking 1500 frames. For the hero in this game. And all of them have been custom drawn by hand. Dude, yeah. I didn't know there was... I thought there were hundreds. But I didn't realize there were thousands. Holy shit. And people still write me in saying, Hey, are, are, if you change your sword, does it change the art? I'm like, no. If you change the sword, there'd be another like 1,500 frames or whatever. Unless I implemented an armor system, but it's probably not going to happen for this game. Maybe Songbringer 2, if Songbringer 1 is a, is a success, I could do like an armor system where all, where you would totally change all your art. All the art would change, I mean, for... Uh... Okay, so if I blend these layers together, I'm trying to come up with a tone that's like, that just say, that says like, this is a pyramid color. That looks pretty good. It's about halfway between those two colors. And then if I apply this layer in sort of like this kind of fashion, Look kind of sandy. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna quickly go and how much space does that take up? Let me show you. I'll show you exactly how much space it takes up. Why don't I make a sword an object that will be falling a certain point on the player? That's yeah, Glam Hoth, that's what I was talking about with an armor system. I was talking about a system where everything would be separate sprites and stuff like that, but it's it would be complicated because basically I have it like look at this this certain animation right here like this just where he swings his sword. I guess it wouldn't be that complicated. It would just be a lot of work. So for this sword swinging animation here, like for every one of these frames, basically the sword would need to have its own, I would have to take out the sword and put it on its own sprite. And it would basically, this sword would have, have to mirror this animation exactly. So this animation would just be the hero with, and then the sword would be its own animation too. And they would have exactly the same number of frames and it'd be exactly the same width and exactly the same height. And that's what I was talking about, about an armor system. It would just be a system whereby each one of the little entities and stuff like that would be a separate layer or whatever. Uh, yeah, 
yeah, so let me show you this this sprite sheet for common. This is like it's the hero does not actually take up rock does not actually take up that much room in this sprite sheet because he's so small compared to everything else. But it does take up a lot a lot of this a lot of this sprite sheet is him. As you can see, I'm zooming in. There's like a, that's him. I don't know, it really doesn't take up, it doesn't seem to take up that much of the sprite sheet. But yeah, it takes up a lot of it. Good, good percentage of it. What's up, Loki? Okay, so I want to I want to do this really quick and dirty because um I got to get going here in about fifteen minutes or less. So I'm gonna try and cre I'm gonna create a, a bunch of pyramid stones. So this is all kind of quick and dirty and cheesy, but at least um, I'll kind of get an idea for what this will look like in the game. Whoa, that was weird. I know you could flip sprites over like that. Okay, that should give the impression of a pyramid. And I'll apply this sandy texture to the top of it. Okay, so quick and dirty. Export that. Wait, I should at least centered it.
Okay, so with my remaining, how many minutes do I got left today, stream? Like literally, I only got five minutes left or something. Oh, we gotta go now. As well. I don't know if I could do this, but uh, entrance O five. What's up, Rocket Bunny? Let's go, man. Okay, I'm trying to do this as fast as possible because we got to go to our movie now. But if I go into Entities and I go Five Entrance, I give it a Render Component really, and uh, nothing else. I say pyramid. Do we have a pyramid? I'll take I'll take a pyramid. Thank you. Can I have one pyramid? Just one. I'll have a pyramid for my, for my, for my friend too. Two pyramids, please. Uh, can I get ketchup on that and some fries? And you know what? Just uh, we're feeling wild. Let's throw in some strawberry shakes too. Yeah, I know strawberry doesn't go well with hamburgers, but. It didn't work. Damn, five entrance, this... Oh well. <laughs> well, okay, I gotta get going because we're going to watch the Star Trek movie, but um, I'll keep working on this. So um, I'll have a pyramid at some point here in the game. So yeah, so cheers everybody. Thanks for watching. GNZ, oh, GNZ, sorry man. So, I'm. I'm shutting down the stream right now, but um, it, oh, it's been a while since I've seen your name. I hope you're good. Um, but anyways, guys, we'll catch you next time, and uh, until then, have a good time. Thanks.